Arabs and Jews. <laughs> Arabs and Jews. People that own real estate and people that sell diamonds. Arabs and Jews. Arabs and Jews. They don't get along, but they're not cops and firefighters. Arabs and Jews. Arabs and Jews. They're not pigs with flesh diseases like my Irish pig family. I will work for a Persian or a Jew. Arabs and Jews, Beverly Hills, Tanner Pale, I don't care, kind of cold, do business with their family, if you fuck them over, you're getting sued, I love Arabs and Jews, I wish I was an Arab or a Jew, I hate Italians too, but I'm not one of those sauce monkeys. <laughs> Are we supposed to pretend she's not fat? Who? Who? Who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? Have you ever seen Tim Dillon do his version of uh, Meghan McCain? No. Oh, I'm going to get you something beautiful right now. Oh, really? I'm going to show you something uh, amazing. It's what are you doing here? Watch this. Play it from the beginning and give me some volume. Okay, play it. Hit, watch this. This is Tim Dillon. Before my father died, I had a baby with him. <laughs> and we're going to, it will be raised in captivity. Ah. It will be raised privately to be the greatest politician that has ever lived. Ah. My name is Megan McCain, and I'm on a new show called The View. And ah. Donald Trump, that fucking riverboat casino <laughs> captain, is talking shit about my father again. My father was tortured for a hundred years for this fucking country. And he came back and he started seven ah. wars because he's a gentleman. <laughs> Fuck you, Trump. I'm going to wear my father's skin mask, and I'm going to primary Trump from the right. Come on The View, bitch. If you're that tough, come on The View. You want an Alessandria Ocasio Cortez? You want this shit? You want to fuck these tits, Trump? You want to fuck these tits? No, you oh don't. You want to suck cock. But I won't fuck you because the only person I'll fuck is Daddy. I'll fuck his corpse. I'll fuck Daddy's corpse. That is... <laughs> He's the best. That that I impression. Had a baby. That's <laughs> reason it kept it. <laughs> reason it kept it. <laughs> he's an animal. Wow, who is that? Tim Dillon. Oh, that's funny. Where's Hilarious he from? comic. He's a New York guy. He's out here now. I love, I love guys like him. That, oh. that to me is that's there's not a fucking filter to be found. Not a filter to be found. He's just. <laughs> He's got a hair job. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's gay too. It's so he's a, got no. like yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got like a, a free pass uh, to get wild. I'm gonna take my mask down, but don't tell anybody. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is extremely grateful that you and your household has decided to participate in our trial. Halloween is our favorite holiday. There are so many little lab rats running around. We are excited to present children with the greatest Halloween candy of all. Survival. That's right. We've got the juice, baby. We've worked long and hard, several weeks, on this experimental vaccine, and we are super excited about it. Now you're saying, maybe the children get a little nervous. Kids don't like needles. Well, that's true. Just like there are tricks to get children to eat their vegetables, there are tricks to get them to be responsible citizens. I'm gonna show you one right now. So look at this. It's a bowl of candy. Is it? Or is it the end of COVID? That's right, kids. Just put your little paws in there and grab all you can. Bill and Melinda are so excited about the future that they couldn't be here today. They're in an undisclosed location preparing to go to space. But they have left you in good hands. Here at the Gates Foundation, we realize that some of you are so excited about the future, we're going to have to put you in restraints. But we'll do that for you. They're a perfect conversation starter. You're sitting at the bar, you see an attractive lady or gentleman, and you go, hey, you know what I like to do? I, I, you know how I like to start a conversation? I go, look at my watch. Look at my watch. Let's do it. We're on a date right now. Okay. I've got a, a Vincero. 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 I go, this is how I would start if we're having a date. Okay. Not a date. We're at a bar. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I'm a virile, red-blooded American male, and you are a beautiful woman. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Hey, look at my watch. 
Wow, that's really nice. Where it's you- a Vincetto. <laughs> Watch. Look at it. Wow, it's a nice. Do you want to take a photo of it? No, I'm I'm good, I think. This watch is <laughs> stylish and bold, wouldn't you say? I guess, yeah, it's a nice watch, man. It is a nice watch. <laughs> it's a beautiful watch. It's got over 23,000 five-star reviews on their website. <laughs> Go and read for them yourself. What are you, what are you doing in town? Oh, uh there's a conference for Keep a, looking at it. Oh, please keep looking at it oh, while no, you yeah, speak. You have it. Um it's a uh I'm in a town for a conference. It's a dentist. It's a dentist conference. We're all getting together for the Do I have to keep looking at the watch? I would know? prefer it. Yes. We're staying at the hotel downtown. We're staying at the Ace. And um this is making me really uncomfortable that I just have to keep It's only making you uncomfortable because you don't have a Vincero. I have more watches in my hotel room. Would you like to go and see them? <laughs> yeah. See? Works. <laughs> and that's the way she said, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like there are people that don't understand how much Magic Spoon has changed my life. You know, before Magic Spoon cereal, I was a cannibal. I've never even told you this. I didn't know that. I used to eat people. I would eat the skin of a person. I would cook it and eat it. And it's uncomfortable to discuss this. But and a few of those people I, I killed, hookers and truckers, and I would cook them. And I would eat their flesh, which was keto, technically. Maybe not. I think it was. Some of them had sugar in their blood, probably. When I tried Magic Spoon cereal, I I stopped doing that. I stopped murdering whores and eating them. And I started eating Magic Spoon cereal. And I went to the police and I confessed. (laughs) And they refused to put me in jail because they said every, they said, hey, hey, white guy. That's what they called me. I said, I just killed a bunch of whores and ate them. They said, hey, white guy, we all have moments in our life we're not proud of. They said, what made you stop that? I said, I'm eating a keto cereal, very low in sugar, and I shared it with them. We all ate Magic Spoon cereal. And uh, and they helped me. Magic Spoon cereal is the official cereal of the police. <laughs> <laughs> so if you support the cops, support Magic Spoon cereal. A, a, a dollar from every box of Magic Spoon cereal is donated to a Derek Chauvin's legal fund. <laughs> Sometimes I do it just so we get the call. Because <laughs> sometimes we're bored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Airbnb is, is really disrupting real estate. And I know a lot about real estate. I just did a little fake business. Now, you know that I do this. A lot of the audience don't know that I do. I do fake business. I call up realtors all day when I'm bored, and I pretend I'm a realtor and that my client is very interested in their property, and I ask them lots of questions about their property. I just did it with a commercial property on uh, Palm Canyon Drive. I said, hey, this is Tim. Uh, I have a client of investor that's really interested in the property. What are we looking at per square foot? And what are some of the local restrictions we should know about? And, you know, these whole things, they, they go into this whole thing. They go, well, you know, they don't want a coffee shop in there because Starbucks, there's a competing business clause. So Starbucks doesn't want a coffee shop. This is how the corporate takeover of America is, by the way, because when Starbucks moves into an area, they go, yeah, we don't need, we don't want some independent coffee shop opening. Not all areas, but a lot of them. We don't need somebody slinging lattes for less than we are. So the guy goes, well, there's a Sprint store, so we can't do a competing business, blah, blah, blah. And we talked about it. There's a lot of parking behind. I said, thank you. I said, I have an investor, but he's very concerned about, you know, the competing business clause and everything like that. And I was on the phone with this guy for about 10 minutes. And he said to me, oh, Tim, that's cruel. Their time has value. No, it doesn't. And I will continue to do fake business because I enjoy, I like doing fake business. It's one of my favorite things to do. I like to call people and I like to lie about who I am and, and, and what I do. And then I like to see how they conduct business because on their end, they're conducting real business. I'm conducting fake business. 
Now, never the two shall meet. We've gotten to the point where I was, we were almost, one of my clients who doesn't exist was almost going to put an offer on a house. <laughs> this was last week. I was, I've been on the phone with this realtor for like 45 minutes, three times in a row. I've had to block her finally. She doesn't know what happened. Sometimes I have to block the people because fake business gets very intense. Fake business, people start drawing up contracts. I mean, she was calling appraisers. She was going to have inspections done. You know, I was representing a very motivated overseas client. Now, sadly, <laughs> that client died of coronavirus before we could go see the property. That's not my fault. And I tried to explain that to her, but she was kind of confused and started saying, oh, this, you know, blah, blah, blah. You, are, are you real? Is this real? Cops, FBI, whatever, blah, 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 blocked, blocked. I'm helping train these professionals. Do you understand? Yes or yes. I, by calling them, people need practice. So this schmuck over there on Palm Canyon, oh, I did use my real name, by the way. Like, this is Tim Dillon. And sometimes I make up a firm name. Sometimes I use a real firm name. Sometimes I just say, this is Tim Dillon with Futures. He goes, what? And I go, Futures Investment? And he goes, okay. You just go, okay. I go, yeah, all right. I go, yeah, you got a commercial listing on Palm Canyon on the corner. I'm wondering what we're looking at price per square foot. What's the parking in the area like? What's the competing business clause? Well, any local restrictions we should know about? I have a team of investors that are looking to expand into this area. Many of them, uh, sometimes it's a franchise, sometimes not. But I'm just, you know, it's an investment group. They're very interested. They love the visibility of the location. Oh, he goes, it's a great location. So they love the visibility of the location. And see, right there, we're beginning to do fake business. Because then he goes to his wife and he goes, hey, I just got a call from a guy that may be interested in this. And then he tells his secretary and then he tells his partner. So I'm in. I'm in and I'll give him a follow-up call later tonight. I'll have 10 more bullet point questions before I bring my investors. And I do this. Now, a lot of people, <laughs> I was explaining to someone at dinner that I did. I do this. And they go, that's horrible. I said, Why? doing fake business they go why i said i like doing it because i don't have a real estate license <laughs> and i can't do real business but i at least can do fake business <laughs> they said that's pretty sick i said maybe you're sick because i want realtors to get the best professional i want your golf a lot right mm -hmm. when you golf when you golf every day are you better at it yes absolutely now that doesn't matter now, even that includes going to a driving range. Sure. Right. Correct. Right. Sometimes I see golfers swing clubs in their backyard. Mm -hmm. Helps. Helps. Doesn't matter if it's real or fake. What matters is that this guy's going through the moat. The next guy to call him might be real, but I'm going to beat that guy out. <laughs> I'm going to do a competitive <laughs> offer because I conduct fake business well, and many people don't. A lot of people do things. People go on fake diets. I've done a ton of them. People do all kinds of things that aren't real. People are fake comedians. Mm -hmm. They pretend to be a comedian for a decade and impoverish themselves and live on a floor and walk dogs. Fine. That's all. When you go home to your family for Thanksgiving and you go, I'm a comedian, they're eating and they're like, no, no you're not. You're a pretend comedian. You're a fake comedian. Right. I am a fake real estate investor and I, I will continue to do fake business. So if you get a call from a guy that sounds like me, just be forewarned. The deal's not closing. The deal's not closing. I have an interest in presenting myself. I have a lot of clients when I do fake business. <laughs> They're very busy. Many of them are overseas. They cannot handle. I mean, we should probably get the phone, do a little fake business right now. Maybe we get our phone. Can you get the yeah. phone? Let's do a little fake business. Because I don't think people understand what I bring to the table and how good I really am. Do you have my, is that my phone? Yeah. Let me call this guy back. How do we get him in the Roadcaster? Is he in the Roadcaster? Hello. Hey, Adam, Tim Dillon, how are you? We spoke about the property on Palm Canyon a few minutes ago. Yeah, hey, Tim, how's it going? Good, buddy, how are you? I wanted to know if there's a list of 
the, the competing clause, uh, my client's asking me if there's a list of businesses, whether it's Starbucks, Sprint, things like that, that we could kind of figure out what the restrictions are just so I could kind of email that to them because he wants to show it to the, the his investors, if that's possible. Also, is there a way they can get out to see the proper, okay. property maybe later in the week? Yeah, yeah. I live about four minutes from it, so not too difficult. Um, that and um, uh, I will just go to the center right now and send you a quick list of all of the businesses that are in there already. I, I would appreciate that. Let me ask you a question too. How long has this property been on the market? I have I haven't looked it up yet. Yeah, I've been marketing it for maybe I think we I was I just signed it like right when COVID hit, okay. and then I delayed it for like two or three months. So I'd say maybe like two or three months now. Okay. And w- before you had it, was it, was it sitting there for a while or no? They always like to know these things. Uh, yeah. I don't, I know Banner Mattress was there up until recently. Okay. Um, so um, I know there's a mattress firm this, like right across the street. Yeah. I saw so. that. Is this, would this be a five-year mm-hmm. lease or what, what are we, what are they looking for in terms of commitment? It's, yeah. It really just depends on the, the tenant and the rate and things like that. Obviously the longer the, the commitment, the better we can do on the rate. Um, but, um, you know, I think they're open right now. Okay. And I, and I imagine they're, five years and I imagine they're open to some form of negotiation at, you know, given yeah. the climate. Of course. Of okay. Course. Well, I appreciate that. We're I have, here, we're here to do deals. Yeah, me too. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me too. It's a little wild out there, you know, uh-huh. are you guys mainly Definitely. commercial? Or you do any residential? Um, I do a bit of both. Okay, so, good. Yeah, you got to be kind of a generalist out here. So. I, I agree. Yeah, a lot of people are starting to get interested in this area, and I think it's because you know LA's had a lot of problems, and a lot oh, of my yeah. a lot of my clients. I do business primarily in 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 Los Angeles, and a lot of people are starting to look at this area, and um, you know a lot of them are, are are excited about maybe jumping into uh something here you know because the high season i imagine it's what january through through june uh yeah january through april is our high high season right um but pretty much like right now like september through april um you know so we have kind of we kind of have like a shoulder mid-season uh right. which is september through december right um and then january through april just crushes and then uh coachella is obviously in stagecoach are in april and that kind of you know and we have in Memorial Day weekend, July 4th, even of, during the summer, we do pretty well. Of course, so. I appreciate that. Well, listen, I have you guys, I have your website. I'm going to shoot you an email, um, just again, introducing myself. And then if you could just get me a list of some of those competing business clauses, just so I can show it to them. And uh, hopefully they'll get out to see it sometime uh, next week. You know, they're, they're super interested. One of them lives out here in Rancho and uh, they pass it all okay. the time. So they, they had me just kind of reach out to you and see what was going on. But yeah, they're, they're sure. pretty motivated. And again, I think it's all about, you know, how restrictive those clauses are. Yeah, I, I think they're going to be pretty flexible. So I'll, I'll shoot you the businesses. Yes. And uh, we'll see if we can do something, okay? I appreciate it, Adam. Thanks a lot for your time. All right, thank you. So I do, it's fake business. And I'm doing it well. I'm doing it well. Let's be honest. I'm doing it well. I'm protecting the interests of my clients. <laughs> I'm prote- Am I not? Am I not protecting the interests of my clients when I conduct fake business? My fake clients are important and they need to be protected. I want them to have the maximum amount of freedom in any given situation. You understand? Start doing fake business. It'll change your life. (laughs) I'm telling you that right now. Start doing it. No one can start. You don't need a license. You just need a phone. And a computer, and you can start doing fake business, set up a fake email address. I have one. Start doing fake business right now. It's the gateway to real business. Are you bored? Are you sitting around at home? You don't know what to do? Build a fake empire of whatever business you choose. (laughs) You don't need any type of license to do this. You can just call people and be the person you've always been meant to be. I think I have always meant to be sort of a rainmaker, putting together deals, guy with a six pack and a huge cock, fucking people of every gender, doesn't matter, maybe connected to intelligence, maybe not, power broker type of guy. And that's what I, now of course I'm not that, 
I'm negotiating commercial real estate mattress transactions in Rancho Mirage. It doesn't always, fake business doesn't always work out the way you want it to. I want it to be fake CIA. I can't do that. But I'm a fake realtor in the fucking desert. Even your fake life will not be as great. You see? Even your pretend, even in my pretend life, I'm just a shitty realtor looking to sniff out a buck. But I know who I am. I know who I am in my real life and my fake life. And that's what's the most important thing. Set the expectations for your fake business high but reasonable. This is my advice to you. Gary Vanyuchuk tells you to start a real business. Oh, I say no, no. I say start a fake one. Start a pretend business. You can do everything that you will do in a real business. There's much less risk. Sure, these people get upset after a while, after you've called them 17 or 18 times. You have to make up stories about what happened to your investor, why he didn't show up to the showing, you were in the hospital. It's easy to do. I'm just telling you it's important. Oh, Tim, these people's time is valuable. No, it's not. No, it's not. They love it. All they do all day is talk to 90 people. One of them signs a contract. I'm one of the fake people. Until the contract is signed, all business for intents and purposes is fake business. And I am one of the best. And that's what I've been doing here to keep myself sane. I mean, right now I'm negotiating a strip mall in Connecticut. You see? That's much more... It's much more <laughs> complex because there's many different storefronts. You see? See what I mean? As you get better at fake business, you have to start looking things up. You got to know tax numbers. You got to know profit and loss. I mean, you got to really know your stuff. If you want to start talking to real I have some real deal people I talk to. They're legit. They make real money. And they think I'm a realtor. You know? They think I represent an investment group. So that's what I think you should do. If I had to choose how you spend your time, it would be that. Ridge Wallet is a spectacular way to pare down a lot of the unnecessary shit you keep in your wallet all the time. I'm telling you, I don't know how else to advertise this wallet. I, I, I don't know. I'll tell you a story that might drive home the fact. A friend of mine thought about getting a Ridge Wallet. Mm -hmm. He thought about it. He thought long and hard. He decided not to get it. And you know what happened to him? What? Why are you asking like that? You're asking like you're not really interested. No, I am. I'm very You're asking a lot. <laughs> you're asking a lot. You're asking like you're not interested in what happened to my friend when he made the tragic mistake of, of not getting a rich wallet. Do you know what happened? What happened to him? His children, and this is in the news, you can look it up, his own children killed him. <laughs> Do you know how old they were? How old? Two and four. And they killed their father. You know how they did it? Yeah. They lit him on fire while he slept. And you know what they said when they were asked why they did it? What? He didn't get a Ridge wallet. And you know what? The state did not press charges. And the wife said, I will get another father who's smarter. She didn't care. Even as the smell of his burnt corpse was in her nostrils, she said he should have made a better decision. Last year, my family did like a Zoom dumb thing, or, or they did a Zoom Easter. Oh, man. Not last year, but, you know, a few months ago. Right, right. They did a Zoom Easter, and nobody knows what's going on. Half the people in my family are drug addicts. They're like, they just see them staring. They're like, <laughs> I'm like, are they okay? Do they need help? They're in some just, they're living in their own filth. We see that. Their Zoom background is just a mattress on a floor. They're like... <laughs> Happy Easter, Lenny! Happy Easter! They're mid-overdose, trying to get the words Happy Easter out of their mouth. They're foaming at the mouth. I'm like, who needs this? Get me out of here. I didn't even go into it. 
Somebody screenshotted and sent it to me. I said, I, I will not be participating. By the way, listen to this. My stepmother sends me a thing today. She sends me a link. Goes, my mother's turning 80. Can you make her a video? What do you want me to wish her happy birthday as Epstein's temple? What do you want me to do? So I, they, you know these things now where it's like somebody's birthday. Everybody has to make a video right. and send it to them. Yes. Hi. Thinking of you. Wish we could be there. So I just, you know, I have my glasses on. I'm like, hey, Dorothea, we love you. <laughs> Stay strong. I said, Stay strong. Like she's the woman has cancer. Right. It's just her birthday. My black glasses on. I'm like, Dorothea, I love you. Stay strong. Better days ahead. This is what I say. I don't even realize what I'm saying. I go, Stay strong. Like, literally, she got diagnosed with a disease. I'm just wishing her happy birthday. She's actually in great health, probably in much better health than me. Imagine that a fat guy telling you to stay strong. Like, I'm, I look like I'm literally dead, and I'm like, Dorothea, stay strong. Better days ahead. I go, better days ahead, and then I go, stay safe. And then I, I swear to God, I go like this. I go, see you on the other end. And then I finally say, happy birthday. It's the most cryptic and disturbing message. I didn't know what to say. And then I'm like, done. And then I just hit send because I didn't want to edit it. Right. So literally the whole video is, hey, Dorothea, <sighs> stay strong. Better days ahead. I'll see you on the other end. Out. And then probably cuts to somebody who's like, happy birthday. We love you. And it's, it's literally sandwiched in between two peppy happy birthdays. It's like, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. And then they cut to me and I'm like, Dorothea, stay strong. When I make it, I'll send word for you. Stay safe. Better days ahead. Just in black glasses. And then it cuts to somebody being like, happy birthday. How old are you now? <laughs> I look like I'm in a safe house. I'm just laying on, on my bed like this uh, atop. Uh -huh. Hey. Happy birthday. I, I can barely breathe. I think I have COVID. I'm like, happy birthday. I smoked too many cigarettes last night. I'm like, happy birthday. Stay safe. Better days ahead. Hope to see you on the other side. It's just the darkest. And you're wearing sunglasses? I'm wearing black sunglasses because I was outside in the pool. And then I get this message like, hey, you got you to gotta wish this woman happy birthday because she gives a fuck. They asked my cut. They asked a couple of my cousins who are on heroin. They're on smack. They've met it twice. When when you have a divorced family, nobody knows who anyone else is. I'm glad that Yelp is now solving the problem of racism, so you can go identify uh, if the if the waitress at Applebee's was. And by the way, aren't these major corporations going to start to sue Yelp for this? Oh, interesting. Wouldn't wouldn't you sue Yelp? Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. It's saying you might, mean, you might have to link to a news article from a credible media outlet, but I mean. Good luck finding one of them. <laughs> a credible media outlet? This is what? Like, I don't know. I mean, they well, don't What are we listen. doing here, folks? Just eat your food and move on, you fat fucks. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Green cactus is transphobic. Just eat the taco. I mean, for the love of God, this is really just creeping into every fucking area. It's boredom. This is yeah. boredom. People are bored, and they and they don't know what to do. And people at Yelp are like, "How do we capitalize on all of the anti-racism that's floating around? Let's let people rat out restaurants they feel are racist." You should open a restaurant with the best food at the best deals and make it like genuinely the most offensive restaurant ever. Like it should be an oppression themed restaurant. Swear to God, the table should be little gas chambers <laughs> and the people that serve you should be SS guards and all the performers should be slaves, slaves. And then to the side of the restaurant, like the people that check you in are Irish and they haven't eaten because of the potato famine and they all look fucking inbred and there should be them. And then there should be a back garden of the restaurant called the Gaza Strip where you, you don't even get food. They just throw the, the, the leftover food they found on the floor. They throw it at you. And if you try to get water, they hit you with a stick. 
And if you price that restaurant up fairly, if you price that fairly, people will go. <laughs> if the food is good and it is priced fairly, I will straight up look at Ben and go, we're going to Nazi slaves tonight. <laughs> we're going to Nazi slaves. You know I like the buffalo chicken wrap because it's nice. They use the chunky blue cheese. We're going to Nazi slaves. So I don't care if it makes you feel uncomfortable. And we're eating in the back garden of Gaza Strip because of COVID-19. That's what they should fucking do. I mean, if I was a billionaire, I would just open the most offensive restaurant known to man and see what Yelp did with that. How do you like this, Yelp? Christ on the cross would greet you and say, hello, welcome to the restaurant. And then you know what you would do? You would pin a nail in Christ's hand and we'd have a burger, a really big burger. And if you ate the burger, you would get to assassinate JFK. Like we'd have a fake JFK and you could shoot him and then he'd splatter and then one of the waitresses pretends to be Jackie <laughs> and we'd put you on the wall and you said, you finished the JFK burger and I killed Kennedy and you'd have a big smile on your face. <laughs> the desserts would be 9-11 themed. The most offensive restaurant known to man just to fuck with Yelp. See what happens. I mean, just... Just crazy bad. Just crazy bad. We would hand out crayons and 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 pieces of paper to the kids, but only if they drew Muhammad. Do you understand? This restaurant would last maybe a month. In a mature country, this would be a hilarious restaurant. Yeah. In a mature country, this would be hilarious. If we were a mature country. You should be able to go out and eat a meal in a restaurant that makes fun of genocide in a fun way. Now, I guess I understand the argument against this type of restaurant, <laughs> too. I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying that I don't understand that, but I'm just saying it's something to, hey, it's something to consider. Okay, as the only gal on the panel who held up a Boston market this weekend, I'm going to talk a little bit about guns, okay? A lot of people in the media have never shot a gun, and they've certainly never masturbated with one. They have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Beto O'Rourke, my gun's not for sale, but my pussy is. And the price is P.F. Chang's. My father and his friends used to hunt me in the backyard. I would run around, and they'd shoot at me. And my father said, if we hit her, the only thing that's going to come out is whipped cream. He was hilarious. The AR-15 is the most popular gun in America, and it's the only thing that's ever made me come. I like guns, and I put them in my pussy. You don't tell me what guns I can own or what people I can own. My father was tortured. He'd never deny anyone else's right to kill. The only one who can take my guns away is daddy. If Joe Biden tries to take my guns, I will, I will fuck him right out of my house. Uncle Joe, respect me. My mother used to say to me, Megan, you should look more like an AR-15, skinny. And now I have seven personal trainers and three of them have killed themselves. I killed Jeffrey Epstein.